Let's go back to the phone lines and talk to Jacob in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Jacob is listening on the web. Hi, Jacob. Uh, hi, Hank. I was wondering if you could give me an example of a typological prophecy. And is there any hint that the prophet wanted it interpreted it uh, that way? Uh, yeah. Um, and, and again, when we talk about typological prophecy, we're not talking about double fulfillment. So there are many examples of prophecies um, uh, that, that, that are predictive prophecies and fairly straightforward, like Micah 5.2, uh, when, when Herod asked the chief priests and the teachers of the law where Christ was to be born, he replied, in Bethlehem in Judea, for that is what the prophet has written. But typological prophecies have to do with types and shadows finding fulfillment. And one of the typological prophecies that comes to mind immediately is the temple and all the prophecies regarding the temple being fulfilled in the actual temple, which is Jesus Christ. So not a temple that is gold and uh, stone, but rather a temple not made by human hands. So Jesus is, is the fulfillment of temple, priest, and sacrifice in the Old Testament. I also think, of course, of Isaiah 7.14, which is fulfilled in Matthew one twenty three. So you have a prophecy that is fulfilled ultimately in Jesus Christ. And again, it is not a double fulfillment because uh, uh, obviously in Isaiah chapter 4, you don't have a true virgin giving birth, but you have Maharshala Hasbaz being birthed by Isaiah's wife as the fulfillment in in Isaiah chapter 8 of what's going on in Isaiah chapter 7. But you have the ultimate uh, fulfillment uh, in, in, in Mary giving birth uh, to Jesus Christ. Okay, thanks, Hank. Uh, you're, you're welcome. And, and by the way, I have a whole chapter on that, actually, in a book called Has God Spoken, where I talk about uh, typological prophecy. I compare that with the idea that's so rampant in evangelicalism today of double fulfillment, um, and, and, and I explain the difference between the two. 